Hi, hello. Um, welcome to my channel. I will be sharing my testimony with you guys. How God healed me from endometriosis and changed my life around. So around 2016, I recalled I, I started uh, having serious pain. The pain first started in my butt and then it went from my butt to my stomach. Uh, now how um, the pain started was um, first it used to be just like not constant it started where it was sometimes sometimes uh at certain times in the month it will be more severe than others and then it just went from uh sometime being in pain sometimes so always being in pain and i recalled it was around the time that i got a promotion from my job so i was in training and i remember one day the pain was so bad i was bent over in training and i could not function i could not think the pain was consuming me and um i recall i left um i, I, I left um training i had to leave from the classroom that day went to the bathroom just to to console myself because I was crying and I went to church that Sunday and I went to church that Sunday and um uh, a bishop from my church he he doesn't live um live in the um in the state of Florida he lives in Georgia but he's the overseer for my church and I remember I went to church just the 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 things I was experiencing and uh, I was just so always I felt down and because I was constantly in pain. I, I wasn't sleeping. Most nights I didn't sleep through the night. And I remember I walked in. I wasn't going to go to church that Sunday. And like something told me just push and go to church. And I remember I sat in the back of the church. And um, my bishop said to, um, pointed to the back of the church and, and asked, and I looked behind me to see if he was talking to me. And he was like, yes, um, you, um, can you come to the altar? I went up and he prayed for me. And I remember when he was, when he started praying for me, I just, I broke down because the things he was telling me, like no one knew what I was experiencing. The, he was basically describing the pain and everything I was experiencing in my body. It was from uh, symptoms of nausea to I was constantly bloated. I was um, always in pain in my stomach and my, my butt and sometimes down my left leg. And it was just horrible. And I remember when he started telling me, it's just describing the pain to me and what I was feeling, I, I broke down and I lost it. And he prayed for me and I went back to, to um, work that Monday and the pain was gone. And I was, I was really surprised, even though I, I grew up in the church and I should know that God is a healer, but um, I was surprised. And over a period of time, I realized um, the pain, once I got my period, the pain came back. The pain came back. And so, because um, see, at the time, I wasn't at a place of, of uh i didn't have a relationship with god grew up in the church but i, I just went to church as a, as a routine thing i didn't have a relationship with god and so i was looking for i was i, I was so focused on things that could not help me things i could not satisfy and so um i remember the pain came back and it the pain was so it the pain it was it was so harsh now i i remember my sister put um referred me to her OBGYN. and i went in to see her and my sister started uh researching because my sister's a nurse so she started researching the symptoms i was having and she called me that same day had an appointment with her with her um ob and she said i think I th for some I think you have endometriosis because I'm looking at the symptoms and it sounds like endometriosis, and um, my mom uh, had it when she was um, before she had um, kids and stuff, and so when I went into her to see her OBGYN, when I told her the symptoms I was having, she said the same thing. I think it's endometriosis, and so um, she said that the only way she could tell was by doing a surgery. So she said she was going to go ahead and do a surgery. She was going to do a, um, a, what you call a invasive surgery. It was more of a, a laparoscopy surgery. And so I decided I was going to go ahead and do the surgery because I was in so much pain. I didn't want to, but that was my only option. 
And so I went in and I did surgery. That was the ending of 2016. That was the ending of 2016. I did my surgery and um, I remember I came out from surgery. Um, the first day was okay. After a few days, it wasn't too bad. And then I, I realized as time went by, the pain came back and it was worse. It was worse than before I did surgery. And so I... It, it, I, I, I got even worse mentally as far as feeling depressed, feeling like, um, you know, like this can't be my life. Always being in pain, always feeling nauseous, always, um, being bloated. And so I started to, I started to seek after God. I started to seek after God, but I still wasn't completely surrendered weirdly. Uh, sometimes we think that we're free, but we're not really free. And so, um, I, 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 I would, I started seeking after God. I would leave work in the evenings. I would just try to find services that would uplift me, services that would, you know, just impart some level of faith, started reading the word and stuff like that. But my aim, I was still, um, trying to figure out how can I get, shake this thing. I, I did change my diet. Uh, I forgot to mention, I did change my diet, which gave me some, a bit of relief from the pain. I changed my diet drastically. I stopped eating meat. I was just, I was eating mostly greens and, uh, I was doing, uh, anything, any tea or anything like that, that would help me, would help cleanse my liver. I was, I was ensuring that I consumed those stuff. And so I got a break from, from the, um, the pain for a while. But then after a while, my body get, um, got used to it. It came back. I'm not sure I, everyone, I, from what I've I understood for everyone, their symptoms and the severity is different or more severe. Um, but, um, the pain came back. And so I started, I'm like, the only, the only way out from this is, is, is God healing me. And so I started drawing closer to God. I know he's a healer because my mom is, um, I grew up in a Christian home and I've seen him, you know, work through my mom. And so I'm like, my only way to be delivered from this is, is God healing me. I remember one day I, after surgery, my doctor wanted to give me a shot called Lupron. But when I looked up on the symptoms and all that stuff, it was so bad. I'm like, I, I don't know if I want to do that because I've been through so much already, you know? And, and so I started, I started praying and I went on a fasting. And when I went on the fasting, I, 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 after my fasting, I could feel the presence of God. I could feel the presence of God. And so um, I remember one day I went to my OBGYN because she, that was the day she, that she was telling me that, you know, I've done your surgery and I'm looking out for you and you're, you're still this thing is every time I get my, I, I got my period, it, it, it kept getting worse. And so she was like, I just wanted to, to give you the Lupron to help you and stuff like that. I'm not going to do anything to harm you. And I remember that day I'm like, yeah, but, um, God is going to heal me. Cause I, I was, I was reading the scriptures and I was just so steadfast that God is a healer. And if he did it before, if he did it for, you know, the woman at the well, if he did it for others, then he could do it for me. And I remember I left, I, I'm going to try not to cry. I remember I left uh, my OBGYN that day and, um, I was just driving home and, um, I was talking to God in the car and I'm like, God, um, I know you're a healer and, and, and stuff like I was just, and I called my mom and I was telling her about, uh, the conversation I had with the doctor and she, you know, and, and I remember when I stopped at the lights, I just, I remembered, I just felt this emotional feeling came over me and, and I heard the spirit of God say, I'm going to give you a marvelous testimony. And it started crying. And when I went home, I was telling my mama, because when I hear the voice of God, I like to tell someone just so when something happens, I have a witness. And so I went home that day and I told my mom and I, I just started, I, I started just, um, reading the, the, the scriptures, uh, trying to, to, to develop a relationship with God. Cause, um, all those years in church, I did not have a relationship with God. And so I started developing a relationship with God. And I remember, um, I found, um, transformation church online and i was watching transformation church one day and i'm like god I, I don't understand i'm missing something because you gave me a word that you're gonna heal me but then i'm not seeing it manifest i believe 
I believe that you can do it and you said you're going to do it, but I'm not seeing my healing manifest. And so I remember, I remember that day I'm like, um, I, I was watching Transformation Church and Pastor Todd was preaching a message and he said, faith plus expectation, faith plus expectation equals a miracle. And I'm like, then I, I have faith. And I'm expecting it, but I need to do something to show God that I, I'm in ex expectation mode. So I remember I was taking a ton of pills, like these pills. If I didn't take them, I was like nervous as to what my, the pain level was going to be like every month. Because the pain was so severe. Like sometimes when the pain could take, when, when I'm in pain, I, I just have to bend over and just like, just shake from the pain and I remember I, I was taking different vitamins and, and stuff to to help balance stuff in my body and with the pain and stuff like that and I said okay I'm gonna stop taking it because I believe God is gonna heal me and um, I remember when I decided I was gonna stop taking it I went to work that day and I was sitting at my desk and I was just worshiping God I was worshiping God and um, I just got a vision of myself running in white and when I got a vision of myself running in white, I started praising God. I started praising God for my healing. And um, a few days after that, I left work and I went on my um, vacation for two weeks. I went to a resort in Jamaica because I'm from Jamaica. Um, and I went to a resort in Jamaica for my vacation. And I remember there was something I just felt different. I, I couldn't put place why I felt different, but I know I just felt different. Um, I've never experienced it before, so I couldn't place it. And I know I was worshiping more, and I just was, I just had this feeling of like, this Zen feeling. I can't really explain it, but I, I know I felt different. I remember one day I was there, I would, I would have my, um, devotionals with me. That's something I typically don't do. I was just like in worship mode, always wanting to read the word, always wanting to stay in God's presence. And I remember that day I was in the bathroom and I was worshiping like I never worshiped before. I was, I was, I, I actually ended up on the floor and I was just worshiping God and I was worshiping God. And then like, uh, the spirit just led me to a place where I had this particular hurt inside of me and the, and, and the spirit led me to release that person from, from me that, that, that hurt me so bad. And after I released that person, the spirit led me to start speaking over my body and I started speaking over my body and I started declaring and I saw my, the areas that were affected. Like I, I just saw, I, I can't explain it, but I saw myself being well and I started declaring healing over my body and 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 at the moment I didn't realize that was I was basically God was basically healing me until I came back from my vacation and um it wasn't it wasn't a time for me to get my um period and I remember it was so shocking to me because usually when I'm when I'm getting my period, like two weeks before, I forgot to mention that two weeks before I got my period, I would be in so much pain. Two weeks before I got my period, the pain would be so debilitating. I used to have to do a concoction of turmeric, ginger. Sometimes I add some molasses to it and I had to drink that, drink it, drink it just to help with the pain because even though I was taking... Um, the strongest painkiller that my doctor could prescribe, that wasn't enough for me. And so I remember, um, I'm sorry. And so I remember, um, I, I was going on a road trip from, uh, Florida to Georgia and I went to use the bathroom. Like I, I was so shocked because I was always in pain. I've never had a period, even before I got endometriosis, I've never had a period without pain. And so, um, when I went to the bathroom, I, I realized there was, I had my period, no pain. And I was just like, I was like, oh my God, I'm healed. I'm healed. And I remember I just started, I just started sharing it. I was so excited. I was, I was healing. Then I realized I wasn't bloated anymore. And then I realized I wasn't nauseous anymore. And then I just started praising God like I never praised him before. I started praising God like I never praised him before. And that just brought me to a place of surrender because I'm like, even in my disobedience, because you don't know, understand, even 
I was going to church, but I was still just, I was doing life the way I wanted to. And even though God was, I had nights where I was up and I know God was talking to me and, and telling me get closer to him. And just the things that I used to think in my head, I'm not disciplined enough to walk this, to, to walk this Christian walk. I, I can't do it. And so these were all the things that were in my head, not fully understanding that the enemy placed these things in our head. And you know, when I draw, when I drew closer to God, I realized that you know th those voices weren't my voices i accepted it not fully understanding things but i drew closer to cl i drew closer to god and so from that point on i i i, I just surrendered and that god just started showing me you know where i went wrong as far as just getting off course and, and 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 just doing things my way doing relationships my way and i was just in a broken place and and it, it, it still leaves me in tears to this day, just thinking how great and merciful God is that even in our disobedience, he loves us and he wants to heal us and he wants a relationship with us. And so that has changed my life completely because God didn't just heal me, but he broke the chains from my life of just like going in circles and not feeling and, and feeling lost and not, you know, looking for things in the wrong place and not realizing that the only place that I can find true love and true satisfaction is in Jesus Christ. And so I, I just wanted to share my testimony with you guys to, to tell you God is still a healer. He was wounded for our, our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquities. Um, at the moment when I was sick and I was, uh, I was in pain and I, 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 I didn't fully understand that, that when Jesus died on the cross, he paid a great price for healing. He paid a great price for freedom. He paid a great price. So what was, um, what was lost when, um, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, everything was restored unto us once we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And so I learned that through my experience that, um, also, I also had an encounter when, um, when I was sick. I remember one particular time I came home from work and I was, I, I, I wasn't feeling well. I was in pain and I was just feeling really exhausted because always being in pain and I wasn't sleeping well at nights. Sometimes I would be dragging. And I remember this particular time I, I went to the bathroom and I wasn't feeling good and I went to the bathroom and um, I was just crying out. I was just crying from the depths of my soul. I was just crying out. The pain was so bad. And I remember while I was just crying out, the Spirit of God came to me and said, it's already done. And at that moment, I didn't understand um, uh, the full meaning. That I, I know it was the Spirit of God. It was so, it was so clear. And it caught my attention to the point where I was crying hysterically and I just stopped crying. It just brought this peace over me. And I, I, I just say, it's already done. I kept repeating it, but I didn't fully understand that, you know, it, it, it leads back to that same scripture that I just read. Um, he was wounded for transgression and bruised for our iniquity, iniquities. When he died on the cross, he paid for healing. He paid for freedom. He paid so we can walk in everything that he uh, wants as dominion and authority. And at that time, I didn't fully understand it. And so um, as I got closer to God and developed a relationship with God, um, I started to so um, he started to speak with me and, and I started to certain things. Um, he revealed certain things to me as far as his finished work. And um, uh, we just need, as a, as a child of God, we need to walk in his finished work, finished work. And it's so important to have a relationship with God because when you're going through, um, that's when, when the word is in you, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. And also, I wanted to share a scripture with you that I um that I uh actually not this, that I learned and also got the full meaning of from my from my from being healed by God from endometriosis uh for or light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory and when I, I read that scripture and I, I didn't understand understand it but I remember when I got healed and I, I went to my home church 
a small church here in Miramar, Florida. And I share my testimony with my church because they're, they're always praying for me. I have a church family that was I that that, that stood behind me, and I, I never understood even the concept of um, it's, it's do not forsake the gathering of the saints because I would go to church when I feel like it and stuff like that. And so when I was sick, I realized it's so important when you have a church family to pray for you and to stand with you. And so um, I remember um, when I got healing and I, I, I testified in church and my pastor said to me, Pastor Evelyn, Evelyn, she said to me, um, don't let the enemy steal your healing. And I'm like, in my head, because I'm, I'm, I, I, I mean, I grew up in the church, but never had a relationship with God. So I, I don't understand. When she said that to me, I'm like, I don't understand that because if I'm healed, how can the enemy steal my healing? And I never fully understood it until, okay, I, I got deliverance. The pain went away. The bloating went away. The depression that came with endometriosis because you're always in pain. And so after a while, you, you, you're just always feeling sad and depressed. And so all of that went away. So I know I was healed. And I, I, I was just in a mode of always praising God, always being thankful, always sharing as the Spirit leads me to share with someone to encourage them. And I remember my first period that I got after my healing, I remember I didn't have any pain, but after my period finished, I went to work and I was sitting at my desk and I felt the pain. I felt pain in areas that I never felt since I got my healing. And I just started feeling sad and like, I thought I was healed. Why am I feeling this pain? And the pain was so, the pain was, on a level from one to ten, it was a ten, and it's like I was feel I, I started feeling sad again, and I was I was starting to feel down, and like the spirit of God came to me and said, "Don't accept it. Put your hand in your stomach, and command that pain to go." And right at my desk at work, I put my hands on my stomach and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you right now to take flight. And as I spoke to the pain, the pain went away as if it was not there. And so then I realized that when you're going through your light and momentary affliction, which is but for a moment, it's working for so now I have before I, I I I when things happen to me I would just accept it and now I realize I have power in Christ. Christ has given us the power to speak things and watch it manifest. He has given us the power to declare healing over our bodies. He has given us the power to 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 walk in authority and dominion. We have the power in Christ. We just have to use it. And sometimes because it's new. To me, I used to, I had several times where I had to, um, the pain would come back and I had to put my hand on my, wherever the pain was, my stomach or wherever it was and command that pain to go and that pain went away as if it wasn't there until over time I now, I no longer have to speak to any areas of my body. I have no pain, no bloating, no issues. It just went away. It took a few times, but it, I don't know if it was, I don't know how that works, but I know over time I had to speak a few times when I was feeling down. I felt the Spirit saying, you have the power, use it. And so I put my hands on wherever the pain was and I spoke to it and the pain went away as if it wasn't there. And so we have to know who we are in Christ. And I've, I've learned that my experience. And when I was going through, I used to be like, why me? And I used to ask God, why me and all this stuff and be so sad and feel, and feel so alone. And then now the relationship that I have with Christ right now, because first well, I used to pray and sometimes I don't know if God heard me or used to wonder if he cares. And now the relationship that I have with God is like, I wouldn't change it for anything. I know it sounds weird. Like, why would you want to go? But I wouldn't change it for anything just to know that when I pray, I know that God hears me. I know that I'm never alone. Some things I, I have have to get used to because when you're so uh, 
when you stay away from God for so long and you have certain issues as far as, you know, you, you've opened yourself to accept things that you, um, that's less than your worth and all that stuff. It's like it breaks you. And so I've just been staying in God's presence and he's healing me and God has been so good. And I just wanted to share my testimony for someone because I know endometriosis is affecting so many young women and I know it, it can leave you in despair and hopeless, but know that the God that created you is a healer. He is a deliverer and do not accept because I remember one time I, I was, as I told you, I was looking for things that couldn't satisfy and in, uh, allow myself to accept dysfunctional relationships. And I remember, and that's why God had to break me down to let me know as far as allow certain things to not work for me to know that I need your full surrender. It's not what you want, but it's what I have. For you. you have to surrender to the things I have for you in this season and in, in your life, you know, and sometimes we think, oh, we're grown. So it's our way, but it, it's, it's God's way. And until we accept that, we'll be going through heartaches and hardship until we know that God at the, at the end of the day, we have to surrender to it, it, it um, to God's plans for our life and so I remember that this one point I was the enemy was beaten before I got my healing that is I, I just felt actually led like to share this with you before I got my healing there was this one day I was so down and I was so depressed um from a, a relationship that didn't work out because as I told you I was drawn close to God but I, I still wasn't set on surrendering and I was so down and depressed and then the enemy just started beating up on me. Oh, you're going to have endometriosis for all, for the rest of your life. You're going to always be in pain. And then you're never going to find the right person. And so he kept, you know, pounding that in my ears. And then as I stood there and I was just like dealing with the anguish of everything. And you feel like, okay, your life is not going as you plan and all that stuff. Not fully understanding that it's when you're, you're when you refuse to, to surrender to the plan of God, things are not going to go your way. And so I was just standing there and this voice came in my head, take some pills. And when the voice came in my head, I'm like, this, this is not, I started thinking, I'm like, but life is not that bad for me to take. I know I'm sick, but I, I know God is going to heal me. And I just started reasoning with myself. And then I realized this is not my voice. This is not, this is, this is not my voice telling me to take pills. This, this voice is, is not coming from, from me. And then as I stood there, I, started, I broke that and I started to cry. And now I can share this before I, I couldn't share it without breaking down, you know. And I started to cry and the Spirit of God came to me and said, you're more than enough. And I wept. And I wept and it's it's just been a life changing experience for me. I've experienced God in so many levels that I've never experienced him before to know that he cares when you think he's he doesn't care. Um, and, and don't don't accept the enemy lies that God does not want to heal you. He states in his word that he 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 was bruised. He was bruised for your transgression. So he, he took he, he he went through a horrible um, crucifixion for just so you can be saved, just so you can be healed, just so you can be free. So stand on the word of God and, and declare that if your healing is not manifesting, it cannot be God. It must be something. So you have to get, get the word in you. You have to focus on the word. You have to, you have to pray. You have to even sometimes some things cannot be, um, accomplished but through prayer and fasting if you have to go on a fasting to develop a closer um relationship with god because it, it's not god he said it's already done so if it's not being manifested then you have to get yourself to a point where the word the god is the your spirit man is so strong it breaks the yoke whatever yoke is over your life if it's sickness this uh, there's nothing that god cannot do if it's sickness he can break it if it's hopelessness he he gives you hope he said before i formed you in your mother's womb i knew you I chose you. I predestined you to do great things. So whatever you need to do to see your, your, your healing or your breakthrough be manifested, just do it. God, God is a healer and he loves you. He cares about you. So I pray that 
whoever that's um whoever that's struggling with not just endometriosis but just feeling like you're you're alone or god doesn't care about you do not believe the lies of the enemy do not give in he wants you to take your life he wants you to give up before you get to the treasure that god has that god has in store for you or that god has placed within you because that's his desire to kill to steal and to destroy and when he cannot kill you because god as a as a greater plan for you he will try to steal he will try to take as much as your time as possible so he will keep you in hopelessness and let you think have you thinking that god doesn't care when god does care we serve a creator that cares about us more than we care about ourselves and sometimes he's calling us for something greater but we're holding on to something that we think is good and not knowing that we don't sometimes we don't know what's best for us and i had to learn that we don't know what's best for us because we can only see but this distance but god can see a, he can see way beyond our, our vision he sees all he knows all so i, I thank you for watching my um my um my channel and um just um if you have came this far for me to share my testimony and i hope it blesses you if i can just reach one person to let them know that god is a healer or to 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 restore hope to one person or to let you know that you're never alone i've done my job god bless you